trigger warning for this video. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about blood donation. I'm not going to show you any blood. I'm not going to film needles going into my arm. Absolutely not, because that would make me feel a bit queasy as well if I had that on video. But I will be talking about it. I'll be showing you little bits of the appointment. If that's not your thing, if that's going to make you feel a bit queasy, I completely understand. Have a lovely Wednesday evening and I'll see you next week. If you do want to hear more about this, and I think you should because it's a really important topic, then grab yourself a cup of tea and welcome to the video. So this is going to be a bit of a vloggy, a bit of a chatty video just on the subject of blood donation. I am on my way to my appointment now, so I'm taking you guys with me to show you little bits of what happens at the appointment, and then when I get back, I will sit down and talk you through the whole thing. So I'll see you in a little bit. And how found it. For all of you guys who are thinking about donating blood, the Shepherd's Bush one is right in between m &S. Here we are. And then the village with all the fancy Gucci Prada shops is just over here. Oh, and there's me in the mirror. Hello. I am all done now, so I'm gonna treat myself to a little bit of wander around Shepherd's Bush, maybe do a little bit of window shopping, look at all the things that I cannot afford to buy because I am a student, and I will see you when I get home to tell you all about it. Hello, I am back home. I have had some food, I've had a nap, and I'm ready to tell you guys all about my experience this afternoon. So I was a little bit nervous about it um, as I haven't done it before as a first time donor, but that's fine. Everyone was so lovely and welcoming and I'm not going to say I had a great time because no one's like, oh yeah, I had a great time sitting there and pumping blood for 20 minutes. But the experience was as enjoyable as it was ever going to be. I felt really calm throughout the whole thing. Um, the nurses there took really good care of me and yeah, 10 out of 10 would recommend. So I signed up online before. Um, I went through the checklist, the little test to see if you are able to donate blood. I'll link all of this stuff below as well. Signed up online, did the checklist, um, found a slot that I could do. So I went to the Shepherd's Bush Centre um, in Westfield's shopping centre, it is, uh, because they did weekend slots. So booked myself in, literally maybe like two weeks ago it was really recently i booked myself in maybe even less than that i think it might have even been like a week ago um and went along for my time slot covid wise the whole thing felt so safe honestly i felt more safe doing that than i do going to like Lidl to do my food shop just because being a medical center everyone was so on it with hand sanitizer wiping surfaces down two meters social distancing everyone was wearing masks all that kind of stuff yeah i felt more safe there than i do do my food shop where people go, oh, sorry, can I just, can I just grab that bag of carrots and like breathe down your neck and you're like, oh my gosh. So if you're worried about that, honestly, don't be, that's not the thing to worry about. When you arrive, you have to go and announce yourself at the front desk. You have to sanitize your hands. Um, the person working on the desk took my temperature to make sure I was all good, ticked me off the list and gave me a form to fill out. In that form, it was things like, it was most of the checklist that I did online before, like, have you had coronavirus? Have you had a vaccination in the last seven days? Have you had piercings in the last 12 months? Questions like that threw me off a little bit and made me a little bit nervous because I researched before and I'm not allowed to have had a piercing within, or a tattoo, within three or four months of them donating blood. And I'd had my nose done, but I'd had it done in December. When the box to tick was, have I had a piercing in the last 12 months? I was like, oh no oh no, am I about to be told I can't do this? I swear it was only like three, four months. As well as, have you ever traveled to South America? And obviously I've been to Peru. So I had to tick that box as well. Um, 
the rest of it was more all just generic kind of health questions like have you ever been in contact with someone who has HIV is there any reason we should not be donating your blood have you ever injected drugs things like that the normal stuff you would expect to answer if you are going in to have a doctor's appointment or give blood or whatever it is you're doing in that questionnaire they also ask if you're on any permanent medication but birth control is not an issue for blood donating for all you girlies out there I'm on the pill. They literally had a clause next to it saying, if the medication you're on is birth control, just tick no, that's all good. So I sat down, filled that form out. They give you a pint cup. Um, I'm about to spill tea over my duvet. <laughs> um, they give you a pint cup of water to fill up and make you drink a pint of water before you go in. I felt like it was quite warm in there, but that might just have been me because if you saw my Instagram story of me walking to the appointment, I was overheating in my jeans. I can't deal with London weather apparently, I can't ever get it right. So I felt, yeah, I felt like it was quite warm in there, drank my pint of water really quickly. I'm also a nervous drinker, so then I filled it up and got another pint of water and I was texting one of my friends like, I've drunk two pints of water since I've been here, I need a nervous wee already, like I don't know what to do. Um, but there really was no need to be nervous at all. When you filled out the form, they gave you a leaflet to read through, just giving you a bit more information about the process and with the terms and conditions on the end. tea break. So you were then told to go wait upstairs, which I did, wandered up, waited upstairs, where you could see everyone in their armchairs. Oh yeah, that's my um nice class that I've got on now. So you can see everyone in their armchairs giving blood, everyone was really chill and they had cordoned off um, behind, what they call behind like curtains kind of thing, um, on one side of the room where the nurses were talking to the people who were about to go give blood. So I got called in by a nurse who took me through my questionnaire form, just double checked everything, and then they tested my blood for the amount of iron I have. How they did that was, again, trying to put my tea down somewhere on my bed and there's nowhere to do it. Right, how they did that was a little pin prick, literally a so quick, can even feel it in my finger. They took a tiny little swab of some of the blood that came out and put it in a liquid they had on their desk. And if your blood sank, then that meant you had enough iron. And he was like, yeah, you're good to go, lovely. I then had to wait in that little cordoned off area and another nurse had to come in and speak to me um, just cause I had ticked yes on a couple of my boxes and they just wanted to check a few things. Like the fact I'd been to South America, but it was like two years ago, so we're all good. Um, and that I have had previous operations, um, again, years ago now, but I had a bone graft and stuff like that. So they just wanted to check that I hadn't had blood transfusions and things like that as part of that surgery, which I hadn't. So I was all good to go. I was, the thing that made me nervous was ticking all those boxes and thinking, have I come all this way? Not realizing that because I've had a bone graft and surgery on my jaw in the past, that now I can't give blood. But that wasn't the case, all good to go. Went back outside. They then take you over to what I can only describe as like a big sun lounger and it tilts. So you sit down on it and then you, you tilt back, you lean back and you get ready to start pumping. So they ask you which one is your dominant hand. I am right handed. So they took the blood out of my left just in case there was any bruising or I don't know, I couldn't use my arm for the next two days because it was achy or for whatever reason. They did the blood pressure thing, if anyone's had that done before, where they wrap it around your arm and they ask you to start like pulsing your hand because that should start making some of the veins come out down your arm. One started popping out for me, which I was really surprised at because when I'd been in the hospital before and had to have blood taken, it took them about 12 attempts. Oh my gosh, they really could not, we thought I was a vampire at one point. They had to go in both arms, it was a whole thing. But this guy, top notch, one vein started popping out, needle in, got it straight away. Perfect. Um, obviously when the needle went in, I was like, like it stung a little bit, but then it was absolutely fine. Didn't feel it after that, it was all good. Blood starts coming out. He's like, all good. I'm gonna go deal with some other people. You chill here. Lovely, top notch. Got my book out, was just reading. I was chilling. I was calming down a lot. 
In fact, I calmed down a little bit too much and another nurse came over to me and was like, so I love that you're calm and you're reading and very settled right now, but um, you've got a little bit too settled. Uh, your heart rate and your blood pressure have gone down and it's gonna take way longer for you to pump the amount of blood out that we need if you're like this. So I was given a little sort of like roll out, like the inside of a sellotape basically, that I had to keep squeezing on to get the blood to keep flowing through my arm. I basically had to make like a little fake heartbeat in my fingers, pretty much. But that was all good. Other than that, um, lied there for like 20 minutes, I think, maybe 15, 20 minutes, not long at all. Read a couple pages of my play. They then said, you're all done, you've pumped. Came over, cut everything off. Needle came out, a little bit of sanitized. They had put um, a, what's it called, like a like a cotton ball basically to keep the pressure on, checked that I wasn't bleeding too much, popped and plaster on, and then they popped a small like roll, okay, yeah, I guess another little like cotton ball kind of thing and stuck that over the top just to keep some pressure on it. So that little bit of cotton roll, um, you have to keep on for 30 minutes just to keep the pressure on where you've been pierced and then the plaster you have to keep on for about six hours. So actually I could probably take mine off now. But yeah, all good. They then walk you over to the sort of the waiting area where then another nurse took over. She got me a glass of squash, had some custard creams, had to sit there just for like 15, 20 minutes just to make sure that I wasn't gonna collapse. And then they were like, cool, off you go. You're done, that was it. The whole process was so painless and stress-free, really. There was nothing to be worried about. And that's that, it was done. Also, if you're at all worried about feeling faint or whatever after the donation, um, obviously I know everyone's different, everyone has different ways of their body coping with these kind of things, but I felt absolutely fine. I had a big breakfast before, that's what you need to do, you need to make sure you eat before and they will ask you if you've eaten before. So I had scrambled eggs on toast and a protein shake for breakfast. Um, my donation was at 10 past 11 in the morning and absolutely fine. Went, did a little bit of shopping after, got the tube home, did my food shop, got back. I had a nap um, when I did get home, which probably made me feel more tired. Like I felt more tired because of the blood donation. Yeah, for me having a nap on a Sunday afternoon isn't that wild. Yeah, absolutely fine. Didn't feel faint at all. So that's not something you should worry about as long as you've eaten and drunk enough before they do make sure like i said they do make sure you're really hydrated when you're donating because obviously that if you're really dehydrated and then you're giving away like a pint of blood you're not gonna feel great <laughs> so obviously on the walls of the donation room they had lots of posters of different people saying like this is my story thank you for your donation they had loads of banners saying you're doing an amazing thing you're wonderful thank you so much there's such positive vibes in there they had like good music playing yeah it was a really lovely space to be in um i would really recommend blood donating i was reading some of the stories around the room the one that really got me was a quote from a woman's story about how she'd had a bit of a traumatic experience giving birth and she had to have a blood transfusion and that transfusion saved her life. And if she hadn't been able to have that, then she wouldn't be here to be raising her kids. She would have died in childbirth. And I was reading it and I was just thinking like, that's insane that even now with modern medicine and all the things we have, Things like that can still happen so easily in something as everyday, really, as, as childbirth. Babies are born every day. We as women are made to have babies. Whether we choose to or not, we have those organs to make babies. And the fact that that can still go so badly wrong, that someone could die during that, or I could take an hour out of my day to go feel a little bit uncomfortable and to sit somewhere and read my book, essentially, is what I did, um, to answer some questions about my health. And now that child will grow up with a mother. I just, it's so worth it. I think it's so worth it. I know I will never know where my blood goes, but the thought that it could be going towards something like that. Why wouldn't you? 
why wouldn't you? I believe in the UK you can donate blood from age 18. I'm 23, this is the first time I'm doing it. And honestly, I don't know why I waited so long. I just never really thought about it until now. And I wish I'd started earlier. And I will be donating again. So in the UK, there are some rules and regulations about donating blood. Um, for women, you have to wait three months in between each blood donation. I believe it's 12 weeks. Whereas for men, you only have to wait two months. I think it's eight weeks in between each donation. Um, it's, it's something like that. I will double check and put all the information and the links to everything below so you can go check it out yourself. But I really think it's worth it. I really think it is. Everyone there made me feel so comfortable. I felt so at home. I came away from a really positive experience with it. I just, I just think it's so worth it. Why wouldn't you? For me, I have the same thoughts about things like organ donation and bone marrow donation. So in the UK, it's now an opt out policy for organ donation, which I think is really good because I think a lot of people didn't realize that you had to opt in. When I got my driving license, it was still an opt in policy then. And as you are now more likely to crash a car, they ask you to opt into organ donation as you pass, which is what I did. Um, I opted in to donate everything because I'm young, fit and healthy. If I pop my clogs tomorrow for whatever reason, I don't want all this to go to waste. Take it, take it. Yeah, it's now opt out. So, but just double check that you are registered if that's something that you want to do, if your religion allows for it, all that kind of stuff. Bone marrow donation, I signed up for when I was at uni. It's a tiny bit more complicated in terms of you have to fill out a few more forms. And I remember having to spit into a test tube so they knew my bone marrow type or something like that. I can't quite remember what it was, but I signed up with Anthony Nolan. They have people all over. I was walking back to halls one day and had people waiting outside of halls, asking us to sign up and literally just did it there on the spot. And they had people doing it in the union and things like that. Um, I'm not sure quite where you would sign up with them, but I'm sure if you did it online, they would send you a kit out, stuff like that. Or if you are at uni, check and see whether your uni has Anthony Nolan days where people will come in and sign you up, because that's another really good thing to do. So overall, 10 out of 10, absolutely would recommend. I felt so cared for there. It was a really lovely experience and they really need donors at the moment because less people are doing it because of COVID, yet more people need them because of COVID. So really, please, 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 if you can, if you're able, if you're young, fit and healthy, and if your religion allows you to, I don't know if religion stands in the way of blood transfusions, but if you can, please sign up to be a blood donor. It's so easy, it literally takes an hour maximum out of your day, and yet yeah, it can save someone's life. Thank you to everyone at the Shepherd's Bush Donor Centre. You were all lovely. Thank you for taking such good care of me on my first time. And I will see you all again soon. And I will see you all again next Wednesday in the next video. Mwah. Thank you to everyone at the Shepherd's Blush, Shepherd's Shepherd. <laughs>